Okay, so we're going to do the manic reaction. So the manic reaction has two parts to it. It's got a lot in common with things like reductive amination because you've got to form an imine and it also has a lot in common with the aldol reaction because you're reacting with the uh, carbon alpha to a carbonyl carbon. So it's a reaction that takes place between an enolizable ketone, in this case we use acetophenone, uh, primary or secondary amine, although you can do it with ammonia uh, as well. In this case we're going to do it with dimethylamine and an aldehyde and the original example was formaldehyde. You can do it with other aldehydes but formaldehyde works quite well. And when you're doing this reaction you do it in slightly acidic conditions usually using something like hydrochloric acid or hydro hydroiodic acid. Um, but really any mildly acidic conditions will do. So the first thing that's going to happen before we take the acid into play, because the acid is only there in a catalytic amount, is that the strongest nucleophile is going to react with the strongest electrophile and formaldehyde is a very good electrophile so that can attack and create a tetrahedral intermediate. And this part of the reaction doesn't involve the enolizable ketone just yet and it should also be very familiar because it's the same kind of thing that you've seen in many other different reactions, attack a carbonyl carbon and create a tetrahedral intermediate. Specifically, if you want to check out doing reductive aminations, it's mechanistically identical to that. So, where are we? Well, let's draw out everything. We're going to leave this off to one side. We'll bring it back into the reaction later. But redraw all of these things exactly as they were, except for what has been moved. So we'll leave those two metals there. That hydrogen is still there. I've changed the bond angle slightly but all of the connections that were there that didn't have an arrow going from them are still there. We took this lone pair here and we made a new carbon-carbon bond and we took this pair of electrons here and we made a new negative charge on the oxygen. And because we've taken this pair of electrons and put them into this bond here, nitrogen now is positively charged. So, as in a reductive amination reaction, the next thing to happen is going to be proton transfer so this transfer, or this is just going to mean a proton leaves the nitrogen and is taken up by the oxygen. It's not necessarily the same proton, but one is going to go into solution and another one is going to come out of solution. So we can draw out our new structure. Which looks like this. And now we're in a really uh, typical situation when we deal with carbon ions, and that is that we have a tetrahedral intermediate and one of these things, one of the heteroatoms, is going to have to be the leaving group. In order to decide which, we're going to have to protonate one of them because neither is a sufficiently good leaving group as it stands. The nitrogen isn't going to form a double bond and kick out a hydroxide, nor are we going to kick out a nitrogen with a negative charge on it. If we do kick out the nitrogen, which of course we can by protonating it, we'll just be going backwards. So in fact at this point it's worth noting that each of these steps are reversible. They are in fact equilibria. Even though I didn't actually draw that to start, but it's worth noting that this can go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. But we're going to introduce, so we're also going to say here, we're going to introduce a H+. And this H plus is solvated somewhere in the reaction, but for our purposes we just want the H plus itself coming from the hydrochloric acid. It's going to be taken up by the oxygen to make water as the leaving group. So let's draw that out and again all of these things are in equilibrium so everything exactly as it was except for what the arrows have gone from. So we've made that bond from the oxygen to the hydrogen and that oxygen is now sharing a pair of electrons that had all to itself so it's now positively charged. So now this is a really good leaving group. The lone pair on the nitrogen can reform or form a carbon-nitrogen double bond and at the same time kick out water as a leaving group. And again, all of these steps are in equilibrium. And there's now a positive charge on the nitrogen because that lone pair formed a new carbon-nitrogen double bond. So nitrogen is now sharing a pair of electrons it had all to itself and we have also made 
water, H2O. So if you want this reaction to go to completion, you have to take out one of the products, you have to take out water as the reaction goes along. But now we've made one of the two uh, reactants that are going to react in this uh, manic reaction. So we've made an aluminium ion and we also have our enolizable ketone, or more generally our enolizable carbonyl. Because a manic reaction is really a general reaction and it'll happen for lots and lots and lots of different nucleophiles. So we're going to react with this. This is important, but before we do, we have to get this into a form that is nucleophilic. So let's consider our ketone in an acidic environment. And in an acidic environment where there are solvated H pluses, so there they are in inverted commas, this can be protonated. And when it's protonated, yes, it does become a bit of a better electrophile. So we're adding in H plus. It does become a bit of a better electrophile, but that's not uh, ever going to compete with how electrophilic the formaldehyde is. So why am I drawing this out? Well, what's going to happen is that you're going to get keto enol tautomerization. So your keto form or your ketone form is going to turn into the enol form. So this can deprotonate, but rather than the proton leaving from the oxygen, the proton can leave from the carbon. And we're going to lose the hydrogen now, so minus H plus. This hydrogen is going to leave back into solution as a H plus, and we are going to have a enol. So it's an enol. There's the alcohol, and there's the carbon carbon double bond. And that can act as a nucleophile. So this is going to react with this. And to see that happening, well, all we have to do is I'm going to redraw this electrophile down here. So redraw the electrophile and it's going to react as you would expect, much like any other uh, carbon double bond heteroatom electrophile. So like carbon oils do, this is the electrophilic carbon, and by making a bond here, we can give those two electrons back to the nitrogen. So, enols and enolates react very similarly. Again, this will be familiar from the aldol reaction. So, reform your carbon-oxygen double bond, break the carbon-carbon double bond, and this carbon is going to attack that carbon to make a new carbon-carbon bond, and it can relieve the positive charge on the nitrogen. And that step uh, doesn't go backwards. What you're left with is your final product. Although there is one more step, because if we follow our rules and we draw it out exactly as it was, we'll see that this is still protonated. So in the last step, this proton will have to leave. But let me draw out the final product first. Those two hydrogens are still there. It's not necessary to continue drawing them, but I just leave them in for clarity, and that nitrogen now has the lone pair back again. So we took the lone pair here, made our new double bond, took this pair of electrons, made a new carbon-carbon bond, took this pair of electrons and gave the nitrogen back its lone pair. And then very finally, if you want, you can deprotonate it. So you'll get rid of that H plus and you'll draw it in as the final product. And I'll leave out those two H's. So that's our final product, and that is the manic reaction. Okay, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, post them below or ask me in class or on Moodle. That's all for now.